All right. Um, hi, I'm Brian from Bees. I decided to basically try and just redo this by video because if I were to type this out, it would take forever. <laughs> That's why I've been putting it off. But let's see here. Um, number one, what is the most significant advancement of the history of the electric guitar? Um, believe it or not, my personal opinion is probably the invention of electric bass around 1958, 56, somewhere in there, 56 or 58, um, was when the first P-Bass uh, became invented. It switched the bass from being a fretless upright to actually being a uh, fretted more like an electric guitar. And the Telecaster had been really successful in 52, the Broadcaster before that in like 50. I was the first person to market like a solid body guitar and actually start to kind of do okay. Before that, I mean, electric pickups, electromagnets and stuff like that had existed for probably 20 years before that. People had made solid bodies, unless Paul had been trying to push like four companies into doing a solid body, no one had listened to him. But I think like the bass is like really the thing that made people like form, and that kind of got popular, like the modern kind of electric guitar took off. It really went from being a novelty to being a real thing. You you know, the modern kind of rock combo came around with like guitar, bass, drums. I mean, before then, a lot of stuff was still big band. Um, but I would say the invention of the electric bass really did more for the electric guitar. It was totally a novelty until that came out. And then that was like the thing that really like decided that like rock and roll was here. Um, Okay, and I, I'm pretty sure the P-Bass came out in 56 or 58, and it would have been the original kind of Telecaster style one. That was like the real big first one. Um, question number two, what is the difference between active and passive guitar pickups? Um, not much. Um, active guitar pickups, passive guitar pickups, if you don't know, are basically a, a permanent magnet, ceramic or, ceramic or on Lico, um, in a bar, a lot of times up little pole pieces across the front, sometimes they're a rail, really doesn't matter. A lot of that stuff is a lot more minor than a lot of people tell you think. Um, with a coil of copper on it. It's literally that simple. Uh, you know, high school science. I mean, you, you vary the field around it, it pushes signal through it, it just like millions of a volt. A guitar amplifier, any kind of preamp or something takes that, you know, times it by like a thousand, turns that into what you hear. An active uh, a pickup, same thing, coil of wire. I mean, there are some out there designs that use like light and things like that. But for the most part, like if you're talking EMGs or some of the more common actives, Bartolini's, um, things like that, um, basically they use a, a little preamp buffer chip and they use like, say, a smaller amount of wire. And then there's just a little like 9 volt lead that goes in there. Um, switched by the jack. The jacks always have a switch in them and basically that will kick it like kick up the volume of the smaller thing and then massage it kind of in a general direction whereas like a passive pickup has to use a specific wire and then they kind of will you know tweak the magnet a little bit or they'll make the wire thicker or they'll overwind it or underwind it and they kind of have little tricks they do to just nudge a pickup in one direction or the other. An active pickup a lot of times will have just a little buffer chip and say like a bass boost, which you can't really do passively in guitars. Um, you can't really do EQ and things like that. You sort of can, but not not in any real efficient manner. Um, that'll let them, you know, throw a tiny board in there. That's kind of what EMG did, which started the whole active uh, guitar thing. Uh, number three, why did you decide to play the guitar? Um, I don't know. It just seemed like something I would like. Uh, I was in high school, probably a freshman, and... Uh, I just kind of like decided I wanted to learn how to play the guitar and seem cool. I really like music. Uh, yeah, every, like everybody in high school, I had a ton of free time and seemed like a good hobby. Uh, and it was. It turned into my career, so I guess I made a right decision. Uh, who is my favorite guitarist? Uh, number four. That's probably a pretty complicated question. I'd say um, it changes a lot. And, um, you know, I definitely like guys like Hendrix. Um, I'm really into Michael Bloomfield. Uh, I like him a lot. He was a big uh, source of inspiration for me. But, uh, yeah, let's say Michael Bloomfield. Really great guitar player. Had, did some cool stuff. Cool songwriter. His, uh, his EP, uh, It's Not Killing Me, 
It's great. I think you can find it on YouTube, but it's out of print. I think you can find each song on YouTube, but very, very good stuff. Uh, who do you think is the most skilled guitarist, past or present? Number five. Um, man, that is such a subjective question, too. Uh, I mean, you get guys that are like crazy, talented, have tons of like skills, guys like Buckethead, Steve Vai. I mean, you know, there's hard to find players that can really like outplay them. You know, and then you know, you get guys like Hendrix, but you know, we're great guitar players, very skilled. You know, there's probably guitar players now that can play faster than Hendrix and do things, you know, but he was definitely innovative. So I guess like you gotta kinda think about that as like I say, it's subjective and I don't even have a true answer for that. I mean, you know you know, the one guy I really like is, is Zappa too. Uh, very skilled. You know, did a lot of things. I mean, and Zappa was kind of cool because he would always hire guys in his band who were like kind of up and coming. Guys like Steve Vai, people don't really always get their start playing with Zappa and the Mothers of Invention and all his various different bands. But um, I, I don't know. It's a real hard question. How long have I played the guitar? Question number six. Um, probably 15 years, probably. I don't know. I, I play dr guitar, I'll play drums, but yeah, probably about 15 years. How did I learn how to play the guitar? Number seven. Um, I mostly taught myself. I had a lot of good friends that played, though. Had I not had so many friends that were good players, I probably took would have taken lessons and probably would be a lot better today had I started out taking lessons. I, I self-taught myself and spent a lot of time. I mean, a lot of it's just time, but... It's nice to not have to unlearn bad habits later. So I, I learned self-taught, and I emulated a lot of people around me that were playing, but I probably should have had lessons in hindsight. What is the first song I learned to play? I think Skip to My Lou was probably the first song I learned to play. The Hal Leonard book. Uh, what was the hardest part of learning guitar for me? Hmm. I don't know. I think when you first start learning how to play guitar, the whole thing feels like you are just got a table in your arms. I mean, you know, years of playing, you just kind of tuck it in there and it just kind of feels natural. But I think for a while, it's just kind of holding it and feeling this awkward piece with strings. And, you know, I think it isn't necessarily the hardest part. I think that's one of the things that people don't really realize. You know, you're not used to kind of using a lot of these muscles. And there's a lot of patience involved in kind of learning how to, you know, put the thing in there and... Uh, and kind of just get used to it as, you know, being a thing you work against. But I'd say probably um, patience is probably the hardest part of learning guitar. You know, you want to be good now. I mean, you know, I, I tell a lot of people that if you, you know, people always ask me, will I be able to learn how to play? My cats are fighting. Um, but uh, I, I think, like, you know, if you're willing to kind of suck at it for a year, you'll be all right. If you're not willing, if you can't wait two months, three months, and if you won't be able to like start doing really cool stuff, it'll, it'll be hard. I'd say patience is probably the hardest part.